Mag ik u voorstellen, het fenomeen War Horse. Uh, al jaren uitverkochte zalen in Londen. Het reist de wereld rond en is binnenkort volgende lente te zien in de stad Schouwburg in Antwerpen. En het begon allemaal gewoon met een jeugdboek van auteur, Britse auteur Michael Morpurgo. Michael, you uh, wrote that wonderful story about uh, a boy named Billy and the horse Joey yes. and their very special relationship. Yeah. Well, it's difficult to know where to begin. I live in the middle of uh, the west country of Devon. I live mm -hmm. in a tiny little village, middle of nowhere. A beautiful village. I saw Very it. beautiful, <laughs> thatched roofs. It couldn't be more picturesque, mm -hmm. but it rains a lot. Yes. And there's mud. It often so does. it's not yes. beautiful underfoot. But anyway, <laughs> I moved into this place to start a project with my wife to bring city children to live and work in the countryside. Mm -hmm. Totally new village. And we moved into it. Only 80 or 90 people there. And someone said at some point, do you know there are three old men who went to the First World War? Um, and they are now living in the village. This is 40 years ago now, a long time ago. Okay. Well, I met them, ringing bells and things like this. And then one day I was up in the pub. Do you know what a pub is in Belgium, don't you? Of course. That's what I thought you did. We know all, um, all I about it. It makes you quite good on the beer in Belgium. <laughs> well, anyway. anyway, the thing is, I was up in the pub and there was this old man sitting across the fire from me. And he was called Wilf. And I said to Wilf, uh, I hear you were in the First World War. And he said, yes, I was there with horses. I said, what do you mean, horses? And mm. he said, cavalry. And then he started talking. He just talked and talked and talked. He was, I was there for about an hour and a half. And he told me stuff about the First World War, which I'd never read in history books. I'd never seen in plays. I'd never read in poems. Okay, about the horses. About the, the horses world. and about the First World War in particular. Mm -hmm. And about the horrors of it and the tragedy of it. And he was a 17-year-old boy when he was there. So I was very moved by this. And I went back home and told my wife that I'd talked to Wilf and about the horses, because I hadn't really realised about the horses in the First World War. I knew about the men. Mm -hmm. 10 million soldiers, 15 million died. We're not quite sure, but large numbers, a terrible slaughter of a war. And I rang up the War Museum in London. I said, do you know how many horses went to that war? And uh, they said, yes, we think about a million went from Great Britain across the Channel to fight in that war. And I said, do you know how many came back? They said, yes, exactly, because it's on record. Yes. 65,000. So if I added up the numbers, mm -hmm. which I did, the number of horses was almost exactly the same as the number of men yeah. who went away and didn't come back. Mm -hmm. And they died the same way. They died on the wire. They were blown to bits. There were machine guns. There was the mud to drown in. There was exhaustion. All the dreadful things we know about from the First World War. And I thought then, you must tell a story of one of these horses. But I didn't want to do it in a way which was from a British point of view, okay. or a French point of view, or a Belgian point mm -hmm. of view. I wanted to tell it from the point of view of an independent observer. Of a horse. Of a horse. So I wanted the horse to do the observing, which meant that the horse had to tell the story. Mm -hmm. Well, horses in England are not very good at writing books. They're really not very good at really? it at all. No, they just <laughs> don't do it. And it sounds silly and it yeah. wouldn't work and I knew it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And then I was persuaded, I suppose, by seeing a small boy who came down to the farm from the city who had a big speech problem and he couldn't talk and he couldn't talk and he couldn't talk. He had a stutter and a stammer. And I came up to read to the children one evening, which I used to do when mm -hmm. they came to stay on the farm, And it was November and it was dark and I walked into the yard and there was this little boy who was supposed not to be able to speak talking to this horse, 19 to the dozen. The, the words simply flowing out of him. So I thought to myself, this isn't so silly. You can talk to horses and it isn't silly. And yes. here's the thing I noticed wonderfully, that the horse was listening. Yeah. It was sort of a therapy. There was yeah. a kind of a connection there going on, which was not sentimental. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, you can write this book. So I wrote the book and it didn't succeed at all. Okay. <laughs> uh, but 25 years later, it was still there. And mm -hmm. I get a phone call from some people called the National Theatre of Great Britain, who are really big and important. 
And he rang me up and they said, we want to make a play of your book, War Horse. With really? horses I said, on the stage? Yes. And I thought to myself, no, with puppets. That's what they said, with puppets. So and you were very worried. I was desperately worried and said, no, 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 you can't make a play about the First World War with a puppet. It's absurd. Mm. It's ridiculous. He said, come up to London and I will show you something you will not believe. I went up to London and I saw this incredible giraffe. Okay. Manipulated by three puppeteers who you couldn't really see because the beast was so extraordinarily giraffe without any people. And I knew it was magical. I knew it was... Tears were pouring down my face at the sight of a giraffe. You were convinced right away. I was absolutely convinced. And so then he said to me, we can do that with a horse. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking to myself, don't go away. <laughs> no, no, no we don't won't. go away. I mean, we won't. <laughs> it's live television. I don't care. <laughs> Joey! Joey boy, come on! Come on, Joey! Come on! Don't hang about! Come on! Get in here! Come on, come on, come on, come on! That's it, there's a good boy! There's a good boy! There you go, there you go! Lovely, lovely, there we go. Now you behave, okay? There's good people in here, nice people. They're Belgians. Come in. <laughs> Come, 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 come on, be good. Be good, be good, be good. Gently, gently down, there you go. Whoa. <laughs> well, I, to I told you they were Belgians, didn't I? <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that good? No, she's quite nice, don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, Joey, I want you to do your, I want you to do your party trick. Come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. You're, you're going to be obedient. You're going to be nice. You ready? <laughs> way up, Joey, way up! <laughs> Not bad. Beautiful. You're a clever, clever boy. Clever boy. Clever. Now, don't show off too much. I've got to go and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> He, he doesn't like horses, Joey. He does not like horses. Michael. I told you, this is what, this is what the National Theatre uh, meant. And handspring puppets made this horse. And they took two years to make a play. Can this I be is... heard over this horse? Will you keep still? <laughs> This is amazing, eh? It's extraordinary. Yeah. Just like, so this is the My centre, really, of the play. My kingdom for that horse. Eh? Sorry? My Your kingdom, kingdom for that horse. for that horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Shakespeare got it right, didn't he? But he didn't know Joey. Yeah. That's Do you know what's amazing is that he really is the centrepiece of this extraordinary play, mm. which the National Theatre took two years to create. Mm -hmm. And it was marvellous because they brought the best possible people in terms of composers, designers... To this piece and made of it the most extraordinary theatre. I wouldn't say it's a play. I wouldn't say yeah. it's a theatrical event. It's not okay. a musical. Will you be still? <laughs> still, um, Joey functions thanks to these three brave men. Can I can I put it like that? Um, not really. Joey no? just functions. He doesn't have anyone controlling him at all. <laughs> he is. Um, you're a horse on your own, are you not, Joey? <laughs> Darn right. Absolutely. No, and what's extraordinary is that when you see the show, and I promise you this is true, mm -hmm. after about maybe a minute or two, when clearly you see there are puppeteers, they disappear. And you are left with this extraordinary yeah. creature who holds your attention and is therefore the focus of the hopes of so many people, children mm -hmm. included, during the show. Because although this is called War Horse, mm -hmm. it's actually a show about reconciliation and peace. Yeah. And that's why it has worked all over the world where people don't even know the First World War. And he represents, I suppose, all victims, all innocent victims of, of war. Don't yeah. you, Joey? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. It's more your arm, brilliant. Nice arm. I first saw it on YouTube and I really thought for a couple of seconds that it was a real horse mm. until I saw the mechanism and, and the people mm. behind. So I was really convinced mm. that this was a real horse. What's extraordinary about the acting they do in the horse is that most actors act 
either to each other or the act to the audience. <laughs> People behind me simply become one horse. And it's the most extraordinary connection between them to make this horse be horse. And you just believe it utterly. You suspend disbelief. And what's interesting mm -hmm. is in the book, the horse tells the story of the horse's voice. Mm -hmm. And you have to suspend disbelief. And then in the play, it's, it's the puppet. And you simply believe it. If Jerry's behaving... <laughs> Careful, careful now. Careful, careful. If it, it's... Joey is really behaving like a horse, so the puppeteers, they really have to know how a horse feels. Well, I think what happened was that um, the puppeteers and many of the people who act in the play um, went for advice, because many, many of them don't know horses mm -hmm. and they don't live in the countryside. So mm -hmm. they go really to the only place probably in, in the world where there are soldiers and horses and guns. And there's a regiment in London called the King's Troop, the Royal Horse Artillery, who fire the guns at the Queen's birthday. They're kind of royal troops. And there's about 160 of them. And they've got about 100 odd horses. And they ride these horses and they pull guns. And what happened was the puppeteers went to live with them and study with them mm -hmm. and look after the horses and get and really got to know how you move around a horse, you know, and how a horse moves and study it themselves. Because you can have all the experts in the world coming to tell you, yeah. but finally you've got to know it yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what they've done. And that's yeah. what holds the show together, really. Yes. Also, they have to um, figure out the noises. Yes. It the, must be difficult. I think it, immensely difficult. I mean, yes. if we ever try to neigh... Um, mm. It sounds absurd, but what's extraordinary about them is that because they've, again, done it together, and mm -hmm. a horse's voice is unbelievably powerful, but they seem to provide different parts of the same voice. Mm -hmm. But it is this link. I have seen them. I'll tell you what's remarkable. I have seen them um, acting without the horse. In other words, there's just the three puppeteers, and they imagine the horse. And you see the way they work together, understanding what the other behind or in front is doing or about to do or has just done. And then you can see actually how the engine of this horse works, or the spirit of this horse works. Mm -hmm. Could you fool another horse? Could I what? Could you fool a real horse? Yes, it's been done. Frequently. I mean, I have seen this horse standing nose to nose with horses from that regiment, and it freaks them out. <gasps> and this is a strange sort of horse. It does not smell like a horse, <laughs> yeah, but it looks, like, it looks like it's sufficiently for them to be really, really interested. No, it's fast. And, uh, fine, 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 fine. Um, so it does, it does, I don't know about fool them, but, but it fascinates them. I think they know they're in the presence of something which is, which is not, um, it's not them, but it's close to them, I guess. Mm -hmm. Michael, you must be quite happy with this kind of war horse on stage now, as it is. Do you know what's I been mean, really I wonderful? I mean, I see you control it very well, you keep in touch. Well, the, the interesting thing is where it goes. I mean, this, this uh, has been on the stage in Berlin. Mm. and in London at exactly the same time. So 100 years after that appalling conflict, mm -hmm. which Belgium knows about rather more than anyone, um, you have a play about peace and reconciliation on, in the two capitals which came together to, if you like, make this war, <sighs> fight this war. And it was a marvellous moment. Standing there, I was standing on the stage, a place called the Theater den Westens in Berlin, and I looked up and there was the box where the Kaiser sat, the same box where Hitler sat. Oh, yeah. And I thought to myself, I hope you're there watching, because actually this is about peace and it's about reconciliation and you haven't won. Mm -hmm. It was a good yeah. moment. Yeah, that's very beautiful, Seth. Let's hope a lot of people and children are going to watch uh, well, Joey and What's Billy lovely the is it goes across grandparents, parents yeah. and children. That's what's lovely. And it joins families together in storytelling and in the music. Mm -hmm. And with this glorious horse. Come here, Joey. Come on. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> You're lovely. You're lovely. That's enough. Go away. I've had enough. Too much love is also not good. I give you intussen mee um, that War Horse uh, volgende lente te zien is vanaf uh, 21 mei in de stad Schouwburg in Antwerpen voor vier weken. Dat is het dan, want dan trekt de voorstelling verder de rest van de wereld in. Uh, Michael Marpurgo, thank you very much for uh, this conversation, for being Pleasure. with us. En ik uh, dank natuurlijk ook Ivan de Vader en uh, Bart de Pauw. En uh, ja, morgen zijn we er natuurlijk weer. Heel graag tot dan.